नमस्ते प्रणाम गीता ध्यान पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्य महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायि अंबत्वा भगवदगीते भगवत्षिणी ओ भगवदगीता विथ विच लॉर्ड नारायण हिमसेल्फ गेव एनलाइटमेंट टू पार्थ द एंशंट सेज व्यास इंक्लूडेड इट इन द महाभारत O oh goddess shower of the nectar like knowledge of non dualism contained in your 18 chapters o oh my affectionate mother the destroyer of rebirth i meditate upon thee krishna vandana vasudeva sutam devam kansa chanura mardanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat guru son of vasudeva the slayer of kansa and chanur extreme delight for mother devaki oh lord krishna the supreme teacher of the universe my salutations to you and we are going to read today what arjuna has to say to shri krishna in this uh, 10th adhyay the vibhuti yoga of uh, shrimad bhagavad gita today we are going to read the 12th shlok till 11th shlok shri krishna spoke about uh, the, the 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 diversities in this creation how how this diverse creation has come into existence through the will of the lord shri krishna says it has come from me i am the source and all these diverse beings that you see around they are all filled with me all these different types of creatures all these variations that i have brought into my creation they are all filled with me and i bring this variation i bring this diversities through the 20 qualities that i have attributed to all these creatures these 20 qualities bring in so much of diversity every creature is different from another within the same species within the same species no two individuals are alike so much of a variation but although there is this variation there is some common thread which is joining all these different uh, jokers for that matter all these different variations which have come up in this creation and then shri krishna told us i have brought it out i brought these beings into existence these beings have come forth from the seven saptarshis the seven rishis ancient sages who came out of me and how is this creation being governed governed by the four manus again the manus have come out of me the savarna manu one manu for each age for that matter for each yuga and with that particular that that type of complexity this this creation is absolutely complex it is not simple it is not just one individual and one species and one mind no it is filled with so many complexities it is filled with so many variations it is so diverse at the end of it there is something common in all these diverse elements of the creation in these diverse constituents of the creation there is something common and the wise men know that the wise men know what is binding all this creation together what is the common factor we see all these diversities around us but what is the common factor and when these wise men budhaha when these devotees bhaktaha when they start singing my praises when they start talking about nothing but me when they intermingle when they have a satsang when they meet together and start chanting my name chanting my glories chanting about the lord about the great lord that is the time when out of compassion out of compassion for this that now fine they have played a lot 
Now let them have the final enlightenment. And when that stage comes, till then all these wise people, all these devotees, they are extremely busy talking, talking, talking. They don't get bored. Sri Krishna said they don't get bored. In fact, they derive great pleasure out of it. They derive great delight out of it. And they enjoy doing it. The Shanti Charaman teacher. They always great, derive great pleasure in talking about the glories of the Lord. But then a stage comes when I feel out of compassion, when I see all these my children, they are so happily talking about me. Then, then the compassion arises in the mind of the Lord. And Lord says, let them be liberated. Like Sri Ramakrishna on that Kalpaturu day on 1st of January of 1886, when the household devotees were all gathered under that tree at Kashipur garden house. And Sri Ramakrishna, out of compassion, he just declared, Chaitanya Hok, let illumination be there, let you all be illumined. And there was an instant change in all those householder devotees who had gathered around Sri Ramakrishna. They started experiencing that spiritual bhav. So like that, the Lord now here is saying, Sri Krishna is saying, out of compassion. Out of compassion, I give them the buddhi yoga. Out of compassion, out of that anukampartham, out of compassion, I allow their darkness, the darkness in their mind which is born out of ignorance, I destroy the darkness with the light of knowledge that I provide them. And what is that light of knowledge? It is the Buddhi Yoga. The ultimate tool that the Lord has provided to us, which we have forgotten, which we conveniently prefer to forget. Because we have so many worldly enjoyments to enjoy. That Buddhi is always telling us, don't enjoy, don't enjoy. That is, these are not permanent things. These are not the real things. But no, we don't pay any heed. And we keep on getting ourselves uh, trapped by that darkness of ignorance. But out of compassion. When we start singing the praises of the Lord, when we start getting delight in sharing the Lord's glories with other same uh, similar type of people like we find, hmm? like the uh, same bhaktas that we find, where our wavelengths match, when such communions happen, when such satsangs happen, then Lord's Lord finds, uh, Lord is filled with compassion for these people and he gives them that ultimate tool of Buddhi Yoga. So here the Lord has uh, told us all, everything about how people get to that ultimate realization. Now Arjuna has listened to all this. Arjuna has been listening to all this since Raja Vidya, Raja Guhya Yoga also, prior to that also and now Arjuna has started. Yes, he. Arjuna is not a dumb student after all. Hmm? Arjuna, among all the those uh, uh, lakhs of people on the uh, battlefield of Kurukshetra, Sri Krishna chose Arjuna hmm, to deliver this message. Now, indirectly, if we see where by the way this Gita message is read, this the same message that Sri Krishna is telling Arjuna is also being narrated by Sanjayatru Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra is also listening to all these teachings of Sri Krishna. But being drawn by that veil of ignorance, on Dhritarashtra there is no impact of Sri Krishna's words. Absolutely no impact. Whatever great philosophy Sri Krishna has been telling, whatever great truths Sri Krishna has been unveiling, Whatever great secrets Shri Krishna has been freely sharing, there is no impact on Dhritarashtra. But Arjuna, yes. And Arjuna, whenever he finds to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, utter something, he doesn't hesitate. 
Now, Sri Krishna has spoken up to 11 shloka. Now, in this 12th shloka, Arjuna is going to say something. Arjuna doesn't feel, how should I say when the Lord is talking himself? How should I, uh, I just uh, uh, cut him uh, in, in between? How just I how how can I just interject between what great truths he is telling? But Arjuna is a wonderful student, and here Arjuna takes the opportunity after Sri Krishna uh, has told about all these things in the twelfth shloka. Now Arjuna says, Arjuna is also no 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 I mean the ordinary student for that matter. Now Arjuna says, Arjuna uvacha. Arjuna uvacha is Arjuna said. Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Adi Devam Ajam Vibhum. Arjuna has also understood this nature of Sri Krishna. Arjuna is telling Sri Krishna Param Brahma, you are the Supreme Lord, Supreme Brahma, you are the ultimate Brahman. That Satchidananda Brahman, what everybody talks about, all these great sages talk about. You are that supreme Brahman. Param Dhamma, you are the supreme abode. You only have told that everything enters, goes back to you at the end of that Kalpa. You are the Param Dhamma. You are the supreme abode where all this creation rests before being created in the next cycle. At the end of the cycle, you draw back the entire creation within you. This is the abode for the entire creation. That seed which is in a dormant state is here in your in, 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 in your divine abode. You are that supreme abode. And Pavitram Paramam Bhavan. You are the supreme purifier. You are the eternal. Pavitram Paramam and Bhavan. Bhavan is eternal. And Purusham Shashvatam Divyam. You are the great Purusha. You are that great Brahman. You are that great Purusha. Out of whom the Prakriti gets projected. And you tell Prakriti. Which has been projected out of this great Purusha. Start your play. Bring the creation into effect. So, Purusha is an inactive principle of this entire uh, creation. Purusha doesn't get into this any of these activities. Purusha is all above this. For Purusha, there is no activity. It is Prakriti, which is immensely active. The creation, preservation, destruction is the role, it is, it is the job profile. Hmm? It, it is the, uh, 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 what, what we say, what is the job content of Prakriti? Creation, preservation, destruction. But Purusha is, no, Purusha just wills. Come Prakriti and Prakriti starts playing. So Arjuna says, you are the Purusha. Shashvatam, you are eternal. There was no beginning for you. There is no end for you. You are eternal. Shashvatam. Divyam. You are divine. The ultimate divinity lies in you. You are the carrier of that divine principle, of that divine force. Then, Adi Devam. You are the ultimate God. You are that supreme most God. Adi Devam, the ancient of the ancient, you know, that, that, that the principle of Godhood. You are that. Ajam Vibhum. You are unborn. Sri Krishna has told us. He is Ajam. He is Avyayam. He is Vibhum. Hmm? You are Ajam. Now Arjuna is, Arjuna is narrating all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, qualities of Sri Krishna that he has told us already in the previous uh, chapters and in the previous verses. So Arjuna is just summarizing these. He has what, what he has understood out of the teachings of Sri Krishna. So he says, you are Ajam. You were never born. And Sri Krishna told us, I was never born. There is no birth for me. 
How can there be birth for Lord? Lord who has willed this everything to come into effect. For that Lord, there is no birth, there is no leaving, there is no death. Lord is beyond the status of life, birth, life and death. So Arjuna says, you are Ajam and you are Vibhu. You are omnipresent. There is no time when Lord was not there. What was before this? There is this question has no answer. Lord has been ever present. He is omnipresent. He is Vibhum. So this is what Arjuna now has started talking to Sri Krishna about Lord's own glories. What Arjuna has understood. And see, Arjuna has perfectly understood what Sri Krishna has told. So now the, this, this particular thing, it is a summary of what Sri Krishna has told till now. Arjuna has beautifully captured in this one shloka. And he is going to also tell us about uh, uh, the, the divine glories of the Lord through texts, uh, few verses. So here Arjuna says, you are supreme Brahma, you are Param Dhamma, you are the supreme abode. Pavitram Paramam Bhavan, you are the supreme purifier. Once you touch somebody, there is no trace of impurity to stay there. There is no scope for impurity to stay there. You are the supreme purifier and you are ultimate. The, you are the Purusha. Purusha, you are Shashvatam. You are eternal. Divyam Adidevam Ajam Vibhum. You are Divyam. You are divine. And Adidevam, you are that in the beginning when the Godhood as such, the idea of Godhood started. You are that principle of the Godhood. Adi Devam, the ancient Godhood. You are that principle. And you are Ajam. You were never born. You were never born. You are eternal. Vibhum. You are omnipresent. There has never been a time where Lord was not there. So here Arjuna just summarizes what uh, the divine glories of the Lord and he is going to tell us further in the next shloka that we are going to read. Till then, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Krishna Arpanamastu Jai Sri Ramakrishna Jai Thakur Jai Ma Jai Swamiji